I'm here at the circus because I want to do some trade stuff and I know that the circus sells bronze wood. And I was wondering who would take the bronze wood. I was pretty sure it was Port Avon, but I wanted to check for sure. And up until now, I haven't been able to find exactly where my my prospects go. I can't find a firm list of them, but guess what? I just found it. It's in the hold. It's these icons on the side. Mouse over them and they show you where you need to deliver them and how many. So yeah, it is Port Avon that needs five or more. And this place also at the bazaar is selling, oh, well, a couple things. They're selling a sack of verdant seeds, which I need to deliver to some places, but I'm going to do the bronze wood because I think that'll give me the most profit, probably. And also, apparently, they needed unseasoned hours here for a prospect. So if I just held on to him, I could have brought him here and made a lot more money. Still, it's fine. Can I actually afford five? Oh, I can't. Okay, now I'll go three then. Ooh, hold on actually. Mr. Menagerie is here and I can actually do things with them now. Oh, I'm so excited for this one, but before you even look at that, let's listen to a story of things past requires one coin. Mr. Menagerie is keen to tell you a tale from its collection, but requires payment first. Charity is a crime, the punishment severe. Mr. Menagerie gestures to the spindle of rock that anchors the circus like a stone weighing down an escaping balloon. Once we gathered here, we held our bargains and boasted of our chiefs. Our bands displayed the finest of goods. Our mag... magnum... how do I pronounce that? Magnanimity. That's it, magnanimity. Our magnanimity was sharp as knives. All knew our worth. Then the light came. They made of our grounds sport, a dancing place, a laughing place. They made bargains of their own. And now you do the same. It rasps in tones of mild reproach. Then the light came. Maybe the light really... Remember the, uh... What was the name of that extremist faction? I don't remember, but maybe they were right. Maybe the light is bad. Okay, thanks to that searing enigma that we got, I think at Kirillin. Maybe? Not 100% sure where I got it. We can purchase an intrepid cavi. That... <laughs> that is so amazing, I can't wait to have it! A large guinea pig wearing a plumed hat is dozing in a hutch. It's sleeping next to an intricate mechanical bat. That's adorable. The intrepid cavi has good range, returns after finding one discovery, but conveys more information about what it finds. Requires mirrors of 50 or more to use. Wait, wait, do I have mirrors of 50 or more? I don't, not even close. I have mirrors of 22. Yeah, that would be a very long-term investment. Okay, gonna keep the diffident bat for a while longer. Right, now on to Port Avon. On the way to Avon, I decided to stop by the signal box, Cuddlescomb, or whatever it's called, where we got the signalman. And now that it's been a while, we can read a new entry in the ledger. The handwriting is poor, but legible. Captain Jayanth deposited materials for hull repair. There's a column for miscellaneous notes. The captain warns of a condition afflicting her crew. It started during a period of downtime. One took up gazing at the stars and encouraged the others into consideration of the heavens. This has since become a fixation and the entire crew only grudgingly leaves the windows to perform their labors. The star obsessed. Two sky stories. Ooh, we got more discontent. Our terror is at 56%. A junior signaler receives a dose of medicinal port. Medicinal port? In the infirmary? After seeing a frozen corpse spin past a window. The experience has shaken him. The dead are hungry, he says. We need to make an offering, or it'll come back and knocking at the hole. 
Jettison some supplies. Probably would reduce terror, I guess, and takes one supplies. Reprimand him. <laughs> Double back for the corpse and loot it. Ooh. Search will cost fuel, but it might prove profitable. Perhaps it has a pocket watch or a silver brooch or other valuables. That's a bit grim. Could transport it for burial, the body. It will be poor company, but it is what you'd want to happen if you were found dead in the sky. Lower terror by 50, but increase your nightmares. Ooh. Do I want nightmares? Not particularly. Actually, yes, I do. Let's recover the body and transport it for burial. It is a good deed, perhaps, to carry a lost soul home. But it is not a happy one. The crew are grimly hardened, but your dreams are troubled. The corpse wore a captain's jacket. Their face is a mask of frozen horror. Is this a nightmare already? I just went another, like, 20 feet. A bump in the night. Midnight, London time. You're alone on the bridge. While consulting your chart, a loud thump makes you look up. A frozen corpse is pressed against your forward windows, trapped there by your speed. The winds must have plucked it from some lost wreck and carried it into your path. The corpse's glare is insistent. Its mustache is bristled with frost. Try to shake it off or send a member of the crew out to remove it. Your fortune gives you a 50% chance of success. Iron gives me 45% chance. Mm, let's send a member of the crew out. Murgatroyd's thermal sky suits were invented for exactly such occasions. You watch from the comparative warmth of the bridge while a bleary engineer wrestles clumsily with a corpse. He is successful in prying it free, although it slides from his grip and spins into the fog. It leaves behind a few patches of skin frozen to the glass. You are not alone. Hmm. Quite a bit to do at Port Avon. First thing I want to sell my bronze wood, which sells for 295 for each one. I forgot the exact price that I bought them for. I think it was like 170. So almost a profit of like 140 per tree. That's a good profit. I have a thousand coin. That's... I've never had anywhere near that much before. I feel rich. I should go back and get the other two bronze wood. It would actually be worth it. And they also have a bargain for the sack of verdant seeds. What places need the verdant seeds? A couple of them. Magdalens and Titania. Titania is very far away. And also... The thing is, verdant seeds aren't actually worth very much. The cheaper the item, the smaller your... I mean, the, I guess the margin is still pretty good, but just the smaller your total profit. You know, the trees, I get a profit of like 140 per tree, but with the seeds, I'm probably going to get a profit of... I don't know, 100 at best? Maybe lower? So the smaller the item they want, the less it's worth it to go a long distance. Anyway, I'll think about that later. A couple things to do. We can spend a quiet day in Port Avon. A pleasant breeze wafts through the village, making even its pricklier residents relax their guard and welcome guests. Only a little, but enough that even a visiting stranger can enjoy their... Bonamy? Buy cheap fuel at the engine yard, buy cheap repairs at the engine yard, or play a round of cricket. That probably reduces terror, not that I need that at this point. This will give you two fuel for 20 sovereigns. Hmm, so that's half price. I do actually need fuel soon. Yeah. Yeah, sure. The oily-faced girl from the docks helps roll the barrels onto the engine and into the cargo hold, ready for use. Okay, I should be able to increase my welcome by using my caddy of tea as well, so let's see if I can do that. Yeah, I can. And I think I have to do that before I can write a poor report. Host a tea party. 
The locals are still essentially British. They cannot resist the smell of tea. They enter nervously, like stray cats approaching an unexpected bowl of milk. As you pour, one attempts tentative conversation about the weather. You express amazement. Soon, he has relaxed enough to risk an actual opinion. You smile into your cup. You're one of them now. For a little while. A welcome of three. Get a board report. Oh, I can share... Oh, I can... Oh, that's the other thing. That's what the salon stewed gossip was for. It also will increase my welcome. Yeah, let's share exotic gossip with the locals. They're always hungry for news. The more trivial, the better. You make for the nowhere, the local pub, where you can be sure of an audience. Ears bend to overhear your conversation about a London scandal. One resident even buys you a drink. An unquestionable honor. I should probably recruit the repentant devil, right? I mean, it's pretty much only a good thing to have a full set of officers. Just for the bonuses, if nothing else, right? Of course, I don't actually know what position they would take. If they take one that's already taken, then not much point, unless I like their stats better. Uh, but first... First, let's go to... How, how do I just explore the town? I guess not the port to go to, like, the village green or something? Or the Nowhere Inn, or the Cyclopean Ruins? Oh yeah, this is where I tried to do a nighttime excavation and failed, and then everybody ran me out of town, basically. Let's go to the village green. Relaxing stroll. Watch a cricket match. Sure. Let's watch a cricket match. The crack of willow on leather. A hesitant smattering of applause. Yeah, reduced terror. Is there a more restful way to spend an afternoon? You sink into the glacial rhythms of overs and innings. You enjoy the parabolic descent of the ball into a fielder's waiting hands. You admire the nomic pronouncements of the umpire. So these are probably all just to reduce your terror. Relaxing stroll. Service at the church. Probably to reduce terror as well. So I don't need to do any of those. Let's go to the Nowhere Inn. Ah, remember we came here and read a work of speculative fiction. I don't want to get drunk. Oh, I can intercede in a mushroomy matter now. Remember I needed to pay their bar tab and I couldn't. But now I have money. Now I'm, I'm freaking rich. I'll help you out, tentacle buddy. I assume it's the same conversation. Yep, who's this creature belong to? Nobody. Pay the tab. Needed 50. As the fuchsia gentleman inflates for a particularly prolonged diatribe about ill-mannered captains and their disorderly pets, a blimmican climbs to the bar top to consider your face. It likes what it sees. With a sound like a shoe being pulled from a swamp, <laughs> the Blemican fin <laughs> finishes its drink. It clambers up your arm until it reaches your shoulder, from where it directs you to the door. Its experience in surviving the cold of the heavens and the heat of those too cowardly to traverse them, it respects you. It will serve you well. Awesome. Also, I didn't realize it was so small. I, I assumed it was, like, roughly human-sized, but... It had to get up on the counter to see my face, and apparently just climbed up my arm and is on my shoulder, so I guess it's pretty small. Your Blimigan Voyager quality is now one. Anything else to do here? I can head upstairs. Oh, hold on, though. The Blimigan. Oh, they're a, they could be a mascot. This grizzled Blimigan has seen all the world can offer. It has been a warrior, a poet, a king. But it finds no pleasure now in war, nor words, nor rain. Wait, seriously? You've been a poet and a king and a warrior? How long have you been alive? Plus one mirrors, plus two iron. <laughs> what a cool mascot. 
let's head upstairs. The new Somerset Hunting Club has exclusive rights to the rooms above the pub, as well as its finest brandies. Thick cigar smoke curls through the air, filling this private chamber with premium-grade fog. Bloated gentlemen in well-worn military uniforms sit at mahogany tables, sipping port. They chunter of the old days and how very much better they were. Request membership of the club. It was a famous club in Old, Lo old London, home to not just nobles and distinguished soldiers, but ex-ministers, royal courtiers, and other members of high society. I want to mention before I do this, though, that this is very much the thing that Elizabeth would not want to actually be a part of genuinely. Like, they don't... It's not like an honor to get into the club. They don't want to hang out with these stuffy rich people. But... They want to get into the club, try to exploit it, or stir up some shit. Our sort of people... A stout veteran gives you a polite once-over. Hmm, I suppose we could countenance an application. Of course, membership is not a matter of mere money. No, no. He directs your attention to the trophies. Most are old and musty. Neath creatures, deer, foxes, and a bear. All hunted in the members' now long-distant youth. Perhaps if you could help decorate our walls with some impressive local fauna, we can talk matters of first payment, and then membership. Of course, we could hunt the beasties ourselves, and we will. <laughs> By thunder, we will. But the fire is so warm, and there's port left in the bottle. Okay. How do I get trophies, though? Maybe there's just a small chance of getting a trophy when you search a dead body? Cantagri trophy, a chorister trophy, and a scribe spinster. Well, we know what the Cantankeries are, the Corsters are the bees, although I haven't encountered them, and I have no idea what a scribe spinster is. Going back to the ruins, we can either enjoy the picturesque surroundings or conduct a nocturnal excavation. This one has the most chance of success by far, uses my veils, 68% chance. This one's just 36. And I love this, by the way. I was wondering, what's this icon up here that has the open, screaming mouth of a skeleton? All is well. <laughs> Why is it called that? All does not look to be well. Uh, let's do a nocturnal excavation. Yes. Your spades are muffled. Your voices are low. Furtive hours pass. Hard labor is harder still when it must be done in silence. Eventually, your crew heave on a steel rod, prying a grap, a grap, <laughs> prying a gap between two stones. Something glints within, souls trapped in lenses the size of soup plates, and stirring irritably in the light. I've got a jumble of undistinguished souls. Does anybody need undistinguished souls? No, it was the hours of unseasoned, barrels of unseasoned hours I was thinking of. I don't have a prospect for that. I decided to buy the verdant seeds after all and head to Titania. I actually was only able to buy three at Port Avon. It's all they sold at the bazaar. I guess it really is actually limited in how much you can get. Um, however, I stopped at the circus on the way here, because it was just right in line, and they actually sold Verdant Seeds also for a deal, for the same price, I think, as Port Avon. So I've got all five. Oh, hold on. Um, can't sell these things yet. We got a problem. Titania is under siege. Chorister bees flood its streets in petals. The thrashing of their wings is the drumbeat of apocalypse, and the people flee in panic from their mighty stingers. But there's no safe harbor and no respite. All is lost. <laughs> Flee the beepocalypse, back to the train, bees! No, help defend Titania. All hands, ready all weapons, fire, god, fire! 50% chance of success, and we've failed! Plain song drowns the lamentation and the fury in the mind. All the world joins death's hymnal, those who proudly defy their fate, and those who beg for wretched mercy, those who raise their arms, those who buckle their knees. The chorister hive takes the lyrics of poets yet unwritten, the unsung, unsung songs from lips now forever silent. It is only iron and fire that quietens the voice of carnage, but lo, the song ends only by its own accord, 
Once the nectar is gathered, the hive departs, and there's a lasting silence. We lost three crew, ouch. So how is the, how's Titania doing? I'm guessing now they're gonna say, you know what, we could actually use your help. Remember before they said, we want for nothing. Too stubborn to ask for help about the bees, I guess. Oh, there's actually more about the state of the place. The port unfurls itself, welcoming you ashore. Little remains of the port now that the hive has departed. The crystal domes are cracked. The buildings beneath them lie in ruins. Survivors pick through the rubble for salvage, while a philosopher proclaims on the nature of destruction and rebirth. The more practical poets glare daggers in their direction as they attempt to rebuild. Only the damage from the Chorister Hive's last attack spoils the atmosphere of this creative utopia. Let's write a port report. Just checking this, this description to see if it was any different now that the place has been destroyed, but it's not. Please tell me I can still sell my stuff. Yes, the prospect was not affected. Yeah, so the profit's not going to be huge on this. Each one of these I bought for 25 and they sell for 80 so that is a profit of 55 Of course, I think we get sort of a bonus. Yeah, we get a bonus when we give them everything. Bit of experience, 100 extra sovereigns. That should do it, the florid landscapist declares. She stores the sacks carefully away from any sources of water, for the flora of the reach is dangerously ebullient, ebullient when nourished. Impeccable service. Please accept this additional compensation. Ah, right, they have Ministry Approved Literature here. I haven't found any place that wants that yet, though. A new start for Titania. Three of Titania's most prominent citizens are arguing about the new direction of the port, post B apocalypse. The rhapsodic mayor looks relieved to see you. Ah, Captain, perhaps you can help settle a little matter for us. We've agreed that we need to choose one style and stick with it, but... <sighs> she sighs, gesturing at her fellow council members, the melancholy poet and stone-faced sculptor. Well, we find ourselves at an impasse. Your thoughts? Oh. I can't choose anything because I would have to have been to Albion and Eleutherian. Yeah, uh, back away. None of my business. You depart swiftly. They're unlikely to come to a decision anytime soon. Ah, looks like we can attend an art exhibition, which I guess hasn't been cancelled despite the <laughs> despite the bee attack. Titania's largest petal hums with activity. The melancholy poet, rhapsodic mayor, and stone-faced sculptor have brought their best students together to showcase their work. They stand at a respectful distance, glaring at each other. Looks like if I'd been to Albion, maybe, or whatever I need to unlock this, I could try to convince them to invest in Titania. Let's attend the exhibition. You spend several pleasant hours surrounded by art, much of it painted with pigments sourced from the Reach's unique flora and inspired by the lingering threat of chorister bees. Once the visitors have moved away, however, they immediately launch into lengthy diatribes on the many ways they could have done better. We are briefly without terror. I just went down from Titania, stopped at the circus to purchase the two remaining bronze woods that I need to drop off at Port Avon. Let's do it. Let's finish this prospect. Oh, they gave me extra supplies. And I think they gave me more welcome at Port Avon as well. 1400 coin. I feel absolutely rich. Delighted by your arrival, the villagers invite you to afternoon tea on the green. There is an alarming surfeit of scones, and you are pressed to take rather a lot of them away with you. <laughs> a lot? Of, like hundreds of scones, I guess, to feed the entire crew for... Like, time passes pretty fast when you're moving. I'm pretty sure one supply will last literally days for the crew, so they just gave us a lot of scones. <laughs> Ooh, I've just come back to New Winchester, or more accurately, Victory Hall right next to it, to turn in my port reports. And it looks like there's some recent news. A downed locomotive on a hybris. 
a tackety engine's gone down in the fungal jungle of a hybris, being a remote and mysterious colony on the very edge of the reach. I guess I can go help them? Sounds very cool. Also, I just like saying fungal jungle. Fungal jungle. The town crier pauses for breath and enters an alarming coughing fit, having inhaled a lungful of smog. An enterprising stovepipe claps him sharply on the back. Thanks, he sputters. Are there any brave captains willing to rescue these poor souls from... Perfidy? And mushrooms and such like. I don't know what perfidy is. Absolutely. I have three sky stories. I need one. Do I need to spend one? That's odd that I have to spend one. I don't understand why, but yeah, I definitely want to step up to the call. The rescue of a Tackety engine offers opportunities, not necessarily just for the Tackety's. Although I do want to emphasize, I do support the Tackety's and not the stovepipes. Cheers go up among the crowd as you step forward. God bless you, Captain, the crier says, his eyes awash with tears. Though that could just be the smog. New Winchester needs more of such stock. Where are now the heroes of the blockade? He hands you the report, which reveals the engine was last seen heading to Hybris. He runs on, calling for a state of perpetual revolution to a mixed response from the crowd. Great to look for a downed locomotive on Hybris. I hope they gave me the exact location on the map of Hybris. Did you? No, they didn't. Uh, I do believe it's somewhere... Well, it's on the edge of the reach, and I I think it's like somewhere here. I think it was like northeast or something. I think I heard its general direction at one point. I'm not sure. And this is the place that I um saw in my nightmares. <laughs> I don't really want to go back. Okay. Turning in the port reports, I think I've got three. Yeah, 300 sovereigns. Ooh, it looks like I now have enough favor. I have five to affect the enough favors to affect the balance of power in the reach. You've provided a great deal of information. Rather than repaying the debt, you'd rather the Tacities used it in the cause of independence. The Indirate Veteran leads you to her office. It's paneled with bronze wood. A painting from the old world hangs on one wall. A single sun burning in a bleak blue sky. Below the sun is a temple, tiered with brightly colored gods. The veteran pours you brandy and you discuss distant ports and the patterns of recent events. Independence is a charming idea, she confesses after an hour. But when London comes, it'll take a nation to stand against her. Gained fortune with the Tacketies. Oh, I think I understand the difference between fortune and gratitude. It's a little bit subtle, but gratitude is basically... Gratitude means they owe you, right? I just spent how much they owe me on doing this whole thing. Yeah, so gratitude is how much they owe you, which can just be quickly spent. But fortune is how much they like you. That's not... Like, you can't spend how much they like you. So that will keep going up by turning on poor reports and doing all this stuff. I'm at 33, struggling. You've gained 10 reputation. Reputation of the Tacketies. You now have 60. Curious. Yeah, at some point I'm going to be considered a Tackety. I'm not sure when. Back at New Winchester, I went ahead and repaired my hull. I hired on three more crews, so we're up to 10 out of 10. I grabbed a new prospect. One for delivering literature to the circus. And I think I'm about to recruit the Incognito Princess, because they are back. And also they are a first officer, which is a slot that I do have open. Also, they just look really cool. Perched atop a mountain of luggage is a radiant young woman. She's an officer dressed in what an actor would wear in a fantastical romance. A tiara rests on her brow. A steady stream of commoners come to pay homage, bowing and courtesying enthusiastically. Starlings circle in dense swarms above her, refugees from old London and a common sight, although not in such numbers. 
She ignores everything and hands you papers so pristine that they can only be forged. I don't care if they're forged. Gonna cost 100. They will increase your mirrors by 6, your hearts by 2, and your affiliation... Bohome? By 1. Mirrors by 6, that's the most interesting one, but, you know, any bonuses are good. Heck yeah, come aboard. I am a humble first officer, looking for... Uh, what's the word? Uh, when commoners do things for coins, she asks. Work. That's it. She beams at you, delighted. As innocent as a gatling gun. <laughs> as she steps aboard, a commoner calmly takes a spoon from his pocket and scoops out his eyes. Uh... I... Hmm? <clears throat> I'm going to read that again. I, did I just read that? As she steps aboard, a commoner calmly takes a spoon from his pocket and scoops out his eyes. After such radiance, all else is tawdry, he says, between screams. It seems she has already forgotten about her signing on money. What the fuck? Well, I wasn't expecting that. Let's appoint them. You know, I should probably speak with them as well. Yeah, hold on. Where are we at with all our people? The signaler, I know that we're waiting for a bunch of reports. Doing a long tour. Can't do that yet. Oh, right. The incautious driver. We need to gamble with them, which I was unwilling to do because I was incredibly poor. But I've definitely got the money to do it now. Yeah, sure. Rumors not intended for your ears suggest the driver is running an illicit poker game in the hold. You enter the hold and find the game well underway. The driver sits cross-legged in front of a pile of freshly won sovereigns and three newly impoverished members of the crew. A stoker angrily throws an expensive-looking watch onto the pile of winnings and departs in a fury. The driver looks up. Comrade, care to make a wager? The driver deals the cards between the players. The cook and a crewman whose name you can't place at the moment watch each other with barely disguised suspicion. Behind you, a small crowd gathers to see their captain's coin. Yeah, let's play a round of cards. Uses my mirror skill, and even with my mirror skill being pretty good, it's only 34% chance. 25 sovereigns. Oof. You throw your cards down, not expecting to win. You're not disappointed. The driver bets everything on a single pair. The cook claims the pot. I hear you used to be a test driver, says the quartermaster. The driver nods. You'd never have thought it. As a child, I love my trains. Very ordered. A little, uh, a safe little space where they could go round and round and nothing could go wrong. It was only after the crash that I realized I needed more. I suppose surviving that taught me that there was more to living than simply being alive. Another round? Sure. <laughs> Failure again. Uh, so this is all the same, but this is new. Uh, wait, you're a stain rod, as in Leadbitter and stain rod? Demands the crewman. Are you still taking coins out of our pockets? The driver shrugs. Black sheep of the family. We don't talk much, not since the accident. Mother didn't approve of my new career, and father... He's... Well, anyway... They shuffle the cards, smiling with confidence. Never bet, but you can't afford to lose. Oh, I can't keep trying. Okay. Ban any future games or let the game continue. Okay, you can continue, I don't care. The driver nods to you, idly scratching an ear. Just for a moment, you spot something green winding around their finger. You cheater. The driver has no tolerance for uneventful voyages. When not on duty, they stare through the stained glass windows if, if, as if willing excitement to ride in on a wave of disaster. When they take the wheel, the rest of the crew grip the nearest available supports and whisper quiet prayers to various gods. Let's converse with them. They keep scratching their ears, even while driving. A nervous tick? Or perhaps a sickness that might spread amongst the crew. 
What? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The driver scratches again. It's nothing. Just a little earache. I'm sure. It comes and goes. Their knee trembles with the frustration of being pulled away from the wheel for even the short conversation. See? All fine now. Hmm. Recommend visiting a doctor, order to visit a doctor, or just leave it alone. They're, they're obviously not going to do anything about it if I just recommend they visit a doctor. I'm going to order them to. The efficiency of your crew cannot be allowed to slide. Not necessary, the driver protests, scratching at their ear with renewed force. A look of pain flashes over their face for a moment. Perhaps. Hmm. My family knows of a specialist in New Winchester. I think father owns the building. I think I can call in a favor. Ah, here we go. Escort the incautious driver to their family doctor. A silver plaque on the door bearing only a name indicates this is the address of New Winchester's most exclusive practice. While the doctor conducts her examination, the driver asks you to update their old records with their current employment. You take a moment's pleasure in the driver's ridiculous middle name and pass over the field on gender, straightforwardly crossed out. Their address was last an eye-raisingly prestigious new Winchester townhouse. You amend it to the name of your locomotive. Ah, the doctor says, peering into the driver's ear. A case of verdancy, a fungal colonization of the brain not uncommon in the reach. You've noticed uncharacteristic impulses, changes in behavior. She eyes the driver's sky suit and scars. The driver nods. Yes, the spores root deeply in the brain. Attempts to extract them have had uh, less than satisfactory results. I'm afraid the best prescription is to entertain them. Take them where they want to go. See the things they want to see. Typically a little travel does the job. They'll soon lose interest. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, two things. First, what the fuck? Verdancy. Fungal colonization of the brain. I was expecting it to be like an ear infection. No, it's a brain infection. Uncharacteristic impulses. So that's why they are incautious now, huh? Probably because of the brain colonization. That just sounds disgusting. So the colonization just wants a little adventure or something. We just do what they want. Give in to the impulses and everything will be fine. They'll soon lose interest. Like lose interest in the incautious driver. Like they'll leave? Or is that just going to be there for the rest of their life? Giving them random weird impulses. Also, a thousand experience, which is really damn good. Also, uh, to, to updating the records. Pass over the field on gender, straightforwardly crossed out. So they're non-binary. I really want to upgrade my ship. I've done zero upgrades at all. And now I've finally got enough money to do it. So... I don't want to spend all my money. I want to keep a bit of a fund so that I can continue to do prospects. You know, you kind of need money to make money, so I don't think I want to spend more than a thousand at most. I want to keep, like, I mean, preferably I'd keep about a thousand, but I'll go a bit under that. So right now I have one Cotterall and Hather Sage at Jerusalem. It's been okay. It doesn't do much damage, though. But I'm going to leave that in there. Took a while to put it back in. <laughs> And I'm going to grab this. This is basically a shotgun. It's uh, effectively a locomotive-mounted blunderbuss. It fires a mauling spread of munitions and is best employed at close range. So it does a lot of damage. 24 as compared to 10. So this is equal to about 2.5 of these rockets. Generates a bit more heat and obviously is only good at close range. But I like having the two options in case we end up getting you know, really close to an enemy. It's nice to have that option, and, and it's not very expensive either. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just buy one more thing. I'm gonna finally get a pneumatic mining array. I keep seeing so many things to mine, but I can't mine them without this. So let's grab it. I'd like to also get armor, but that would put me way too low on money. 
Yeah, this bronze wood shielding plus 10 armor. I don't know exactly what that means. Does armor break? Does it negate damage for each shot or what? How does that work? I don't know, but it's probably pretty damn good. Costs 500 though. I can't find anything to go in the bridge slot either. I think it was just one item. Sensible plumbing that goes there. But too expensive. I don't have the hearts to do it. There's some interesting stuff here too. Interesting auxiliary things. So instead of mining, for example, you could do the Murgatroyd's Stain Away Canning Station. A slaughterhouse equipped with machinery allowing you to butcher and can certain sky beasts, converting them into supplies. I could see how useful that'd be on long trips. Kill some animals and, you know, keep going. Feed your crew. Additional cargo bay would be super nice. But past the money problem, this also takes the auxiliary slot, which is where this is. So I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Yeah, I'm all stocked up. I'm in a really good place. Finally upgraded my ship for the first time. I've decided on calling it a ship, by the way. For some reason, that just feels most sensible. Like, it just feels right. I know it's sort of a train, but it's also sort of a ship in the sense that it's kind of a spaceship. We are in the sky, after all. Could call it engine, ship, train. I'm gonna go with ship. So, I think what I'm gonna do next episode is head south-southwest, probably about here, where I should be able to find Magdalene's 